I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. For this next tips and tricks, I want to show you how to create an environment for your inventor model similar to the environment you find in Showcase. So we're going to use an HDRR image to use as a background image as well as a lighting situation while using Mental Ray. If you're familiar with Showcase, you most likely enjoy the fact that there's a variety of environments to choose from and just render a simple image. Now you'll be happy to know that we can easily create that in 3ds Max Design, but on top of it, you can basically use any HDR image that you want and it's really easy. So I'm gonna show you one easy way to create that now, can you expand even more in 3ds Max Design and become more precise and really position your model in a specific image environment? Yes, definitely. And I will share multiple video on that topic with you while using Perspective Match and other tools of 3ds Max Design. But for this video, I want to give you a simple way of using an HDRR image to create an environment to really kind of support your model, whichever your design is. So let's get started. So I'm going to start back at uh, the initial point where I have just imported my inventor model. So if you remember properly, when I rendered this, it's basically nothing is set up. I'm using a perspective view. It's a realistic viewport. But when I hit render, it's going to look kind of half decent because it's only using the mental ray default light. Now let me talk to you a little bit about the reuse option of the mental ray rendering panel. And basically, if you check that, it will accelerate the translating time that you see now at the screen. That's basically, it's loading all the 3D object in memory before it can start the render. So that process could take, you know, 15, 20 seconds, depending on the complexity of your model. And you can reduce that time by caching the uh, geometry to disk and basically lock in it so it doesn't have to go through the translation anymore. So right now, once my render is finished at the bottom of the screen, it's going to tell me that the rendering time was 13 seconds and the translation time was 8 seconds. Now, it seems to me like it was a little longer, uh, but never mind. I'm going to lock the uh, reuse geometry option. And next time, we'll compare the time when I do another render to see how much time I'm saving. So the next thing I want to do here is go under the control panel create a light. Now I don't want to create a photometric light. I want to create a standard um, skylight and just drop it anywhere in the scene. Again, this is just a gizmo for um, to allow you to select these uh, skylight. Now let's just do a quick render comparison to understand what I have just done here because, you know, I'm a visual person. I like to see what's going on. So basically I'm no longer using the default mental ray light. Um, it seems to have an ambient light in this scene um, but you know there's no environment it's still sitting in a black background and it's not that you know appealing either it's a little better because it's an ambient light but you know it's not that impressive yet now as a quick footnote let's have a look at the rendering time 17 second translation time only three seconds this time so you see that reusing the geometry will save you time on the on the translation of this particular scene so if you have a very um, complex scene definitely you reuse the geometry and you'll save a few seconds sometime up to a few minutes so next let's look on how we can use an hdr image to lit this scene and use it as a background image so I'm going to go back to my skylight parameter and obviously there is a wealth of um, free HDRI image on the internet. Um, I like the open footage website or the HDRI hub, which has a very high quality free HDRI sky and environment you can use. You might want to be aware of the sky, the, of the uh, size of these images that you're downloading. I'm going to use the open footage for now and I'm going to try this uh, scenery from Greece, which has a bit of ocean and a bit of a background looks like a good um, sky 
Now you can pay $5 to use the iRes. I'm going to download the low resolution because I'm not going to render a large image and it's going to be good enough for me. So basically I select this one, I enter the uh, number on the screen and I can download this um, HDRI Sky and start using it. Now uh, something to be aware when using HDRI image is that they have a size, so a certain weight. The larger the resolution, the heavier it is for Max to translate this background into the viewport and to use in the rendering engine. So for example, HDRI Hub has very high resolution, 8,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel, which means that the actual um, uh, image could be like 40,000 K byte, for example. Now, if I load this into uh, 3ds Max Design, I need to be aware that this has a certain weight and it might slow down my viewport interaction, it might slow down my rendering. So for that particular reason, I've loaned the uh, openfootage.net, which is basically 6,000 K bytes, which I find it's good enough resolution for the needs that I have now. So always be aware of what you're loading in the software. So now that my download is finished, it's basically showing up here. I'm going to make sure that I'm um, moving this HDRI sky within my project folder because I like to be organized. I'm going to uh, drop it in the scene asset image folder. I'm going to unzip it and I have it here. So basically, I'm going to go back to my skylight. I'm going to load a bitmap. And I'm going to point to this open footage HDRI image, which you recognize here. It's this. So before I click open, it's showing me basically the range of lights that this HDRI image has, which is great. So once the HDR image is loaded in my skylight, it's going to show under the parameter. So now this is actually a material now. Now to adjust the material properties, I'm going to open the material editor. And I'm going to drag and drop it as an instance because I want to change these material property. I don't want it to be a copy. I want it to be an instance. So I'm going to make sure that it's used as an environment and the mapping is spherical environment. So you see it's changing uh, the way that the icon is looking. And if I look under the bitmap parameter, I could see my HDRI image right here as well. So let's render this to understand a little bit better what happened. So basically, by loading my HDRI image in the skylight, I have told 3ds Max Design to use the HDRI image as the ambient light. But still, my model is sitting in a black environment, so there's nothing to reflect. So the impact is not that great still. So we're still missing a few more steps. What I need to do next is use the HDRI image as an environment. So I'm going to open the environment panel and drag and drop this material as an instance in my environment map. So now I actually have an environment background. To view it, go into the viewport menu, viewport background, display environment background, and here it is in my viewport. So I can basically choose a view, uh, position my car in here and try to find some sort of, uh, you know, view that makes sense. Now this background is kind of like a little weird because most of the time my car is floating in the ocean. This is the only kind of position I have. So, you know, it sounds like a good idea when I load it from the website, but now that it's in my software, maybe it's not appropriate for the particular model that I have, but still I can render it and you can see that the result is much more impressive and it's working as a support background. Now I can see the reflection in the uh, metal of my car. It looks a lot nicer. It's bright. I could see the reflection of the buildings in actually the paint of my car. But I find that, um, you know, this environment might not be the best one because most of the time when I rotate my car, uh, it's sitting in the ocean. What I suggest when you're looking for HDRI image is always to download a few different options. Sometimes it looks great on the website. Once you load it in the software, not so much. So always download few and test them in the software. Now I can easily change this HDRI image by going back to the material editor and pointing it to a different file and you'll see that it updates every 
everywhere automatically because I have instanced this material to all the different location that I have applied. So I'm pointing to a different HDRI image and everything gets updated automatically. The skylight, the environment background and the environment map. So now I can basically use this new HDRI image and see if it's more appropriate for my model. So I'm going to reposition my perspective view uh, to something that I quite like, press render. And now that I could see that it makes a little bit more sense to use this particular HDRI image. Now this model doesn't look like it belongs in this environment because there's no shadows in this background. So to catch the shadows, I'm going to have to create a plane. So I'm going to go ahead and create a simple plane underneath my model. And you'll see right away catching the shadows underneath the three wheeler. Now let's apply a simple arch and design material uh, to this plane. So it's not pink, but a light gray. And I'm going to basically choose a matte template. And I'm going to go ahead and reposition my perspective view to look at my model a bit closer. So it looks like it belongs to this background. And I'm going to go ahead and render. Now I have a nice plane that receives the shadow. The model looks like it belongs, but what about the gray plane underneath? Now, this might be great for what you're looking for. Maybe the car is sitting on a podium, is sitting on a different element that you're adding into your scene. Great. But what if you want the model to sit on that grass from your environment? It's possible to do so by using a different type of material available to Mental Ray. So let's go back to the material editor and instead of using an arch and design material, we're going to browse under the mental ray subsection and look for matte shadow reflection material. So let's load this material and basically we're going to make sure that it's receiving shadows, which it does by default. And we're going to basically drag and drop the environment background to the camera map background. So basically as an instance, of course, because we want this to be all the same environment. So basically what we told right now is that this material is now transparent it's viewing the environment background but it is receiving the shadow from the uh, three-wheeler so basically the plane is invisible is letting the environment background see through but it's receiving the shadow so now you see that your model really belongs to this background now I'm noticing some sort of weirdness underneath the wheels here. There seems to be some sort of a weird square there. And I think this is due to the fact that the ground plane that I have added is cutting through the wheels. So basically when I created that plane, I never really check where it was landing. Was it underneath the car? And obviously it is not. And it's cutting through the wheels a little bit. So it's creating this weird shadow underneath the wheels. So I'm going to just lower this ground plane slightly underneath the wheels and make sure that it sits right below so it's receiving the shadow but it's not cutting through the wheels. So next I'm going to finalize this shot by choosing a final camera view. So I'm choosing my perspective view. Once I'm happy with it, I create a camera from this perspective view, which I find is the easiest way to create a camera. I can show the save frame so I can see exactly what the camera is viewing. Now I can also choose to adjust the environment background the way I want it by rotating it to uh, the parts that I want to see. So maybe I prefer seeing the sun or maybe I prefer seeing more trees. I could choose which, which section of my um, image background I want to see. And you see that it's also affecting the reflection of the car. So you can reposition that. You can reposition it on the Z axis as well. So higher up or lower down. So sometimes these adjustments allows you to fine tune the look of your image slightly. And now that you're positioned your background, you're ready to um, render the final image. You can render this image as a larger size. You can also increase the rendering setting to have a higher quality render the image. Uh, this is really up to you. Now, like I said earlier, this is a really easy to this is a really easy way to include your inventor model in an environment using an HDRI type lighting to light your scene. 
and to really make that uh, model belong into an environment. Now you could have a specific image and you want the model to look like it really belongs to that image, such as a photo montage. And we have tools to do this in 3ds Max Design that's called Perspective Match. And I have recorded or shared videos on that specific topic with you in the playlist if you want to bring this um, idea of working with an environment a little further. So this is a basic way and a basic approach, but there's always a more advanced approach that you might want to try for one of your project. So have fun with it. And at least um, here you can have an environment that's similar to a showcase environment with simple, easy steps.